for you. And uh, Lord, we choose to make you our one thing. We choose to make you, oh God, our one desire, Lord. And uh, yes, Lord, rising above everything that happens around us, rising above, uh, Lord, all the voices, uh, rising above, Lord, all the intimidations and all the threats and all the fears. God, we choose to make you our one thing, God. We choose to seek you. And one thing that we uh, we agree with your word, we agree with the testimony of uh, the psalmist this morning, and we we say one thing: uh, I will, I desire of the Lord that I will seek Him, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Yes, Lord, we choose to do that. We choose to do that. Lord, we choose to do your word right before our eyes. We choose to seek your presence. Lord, um, no matter what happens around us, God, we choose to seek you. You are our one thing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just pray, God, that even as we uh, Lord, make this our choice, make this our decision, that all the other things, Lord, that our hearts are uh, Lord, influenced by, tend to be influenced by, tend to be, uh, Lord, tend to become complacent or tend to be compromised with God. I pray that Lord, everything else will just fall away, God. Even right now, Lord, I just pray that everything else will just fall away. Everything else that causes lukewarmness, everything else that causes um, us to slip or stumble, Lord, everything else, Lord, let it just fall away. Lord, as we seek you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength. Yes, Lord, let everything else, God, just fade away, just fade in the background, God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Lord, you be the center. You be the focus. Lord, you be our one thing, God. You have preeminence, God. You take precedence over everything else, God. You are our one thing, God. Um, I just want to, you know, I just request you to go ahead and just declare that and say, let's, yes, Lord, you are, you are my one thing. You are my one desire. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we pray that our heart will be fully occupied, Lord, with the things that concern you, with you, that our affections will be fully occupied upon you, God, fully placed on you, God, and wholeheartedly that we may seek you, wholeheartedly that we may, Lord, live for you, God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. Okay. Um, see some. Okay. Uh, Harrison is not there. Okay, I see. Okay. Um, right. Who else was uh, supposed to? I think Paul William, Harrison, Salome, who missed last class. Um, I think these three. Apart from them, I think Ulua, Femi, and Nisha, Evangeline. Okay, no problem. Uh, I think we'll just uh, cover what we were supposed to. Um, you know, there are, there are a couple of more things in uh, in the notes that we wanted to cover. So we'll look at that. Um, you know, the last time we we uh, went through the notes, we were looking at uh, uh, some practical things. Right, that would uh, help us to um, uh, preach or present uh, what we want to share uh, effectively. Okay, uh, we started with prayer and uh, we looked at a few practical things. Um, I think we stopped with uh, gestures, gestures and posture, gestures and posture. Sorry. So uh, we looked at that. Um, so let's continue with that. So we know that um, you know uh, when we share, it's it's good to be expressive. It's uh, it's good to be free. It's good to um, you know uh, share from your heart, 
uh, which means that uh, the content of what you're sharing, you know, you're sure of um, and you've prayed through and so that your personality comes through, you know, you're not trying to be someone else, you're not trying to um, uh, speak like someone else, but you are yourself, you know, your originality comes through in the presentation. So uh, in all the things that you you presented, uh, in in all the presentations, you know that that really came through. You know, some of you are very conversational. Uh, some of you were, you know, um, I think uh, I think yeah, Sam was very conversational. Um, some of you had a, a teaching bent, so there was a lot of facts and figures, and uh, you know, you came up with some of you were very encouraging and, and exhortation that came through, um, and uh, and some of you were. Uh, you know, full on preaching, you know, declaring, proclaiming the truth and, you know, your, your personality came through, right, in that and, and that's absolutely fine, right. Um, so it was good to see all that. So, so in, uh, in presenting, in preaching, um, be free to, um, you know, let that come through, right, um, in, in, uh, and, and be free with, uh, the way you present with your gestures and expressions and so on, right? Um, uh, along with that, we also wanted to uh, touch upon one thing, which is, uh, you know, dressing appropriately, right? You know, your outfit should really suit the occasion if it is. If you know beforehand that it's going to be a formal uh, occasion, um, then it's good to dress appropriately um, and, uh, uh, and for the occasion, right? Um, so I remember once uh, uh, we had a guest speaker in church, and you know that in church, uh, uh, well, Sunday morning service, we um, it's it's really a, you know we don't dress very formally. Uh, there's definitely no suit and tie, um, but the guest speaker, I guess he um, he didn't know about it, so he came, you know, dressed in suit and tie, and and. Uh, and and the and the thing is that day we also had our Bible college graduation, right? So 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 he, sh he shared saying, you know, I came like this in dress and suit and tie, and I was uh, I was you know I should have done my homework um, and probably dressed down a bit. But then thank God, God has a sense of humor. You know, you had this graduation ceremony, and everybody, you know, with all that the students, I would call the students with all the robe and, you know, the headgear and all that. So God really put me at, at ease, uh, you know. So uh, just to find out, you know, what is the occasion and, uh, and you know, uh, what is the dress code, it would really help, right? So you don't be overtly formal at the same time, you know, not too casual as well, you know, but, but just right for the occasion. Okay. Um, Point number eight, um, this is, you know, this is really, really uh, important. Um, in our own eyes, we may not seem very impressive, okay? Maybe it's to, something to do with the content or the message that you're sharing. Um, it might be a very important message, but you don't feel in your heart it's important. Um, and, uh, you know, you we we tend to kind of... Uh, underplay the importance of the message or, you know, really underplay uh, ourselves, right? Saying that we are not qualified, saying that we are not experienced, or we might say we are not prepared uh, well enough, or you feel that, you know, something about the content even, right? So never do that. Uh, never say that you're not good enough, you're not uh, prepared enough, that you're not, uh, you know, skilled enough, not experienced enough. Never, you never, you know, never do that, right? Um, just share what you have prepared, and just share what God has put in your heart. Go ahead and do that, and uh, and be, you know, and be done with that. So, um, uh, never ever put yourself down, right? Um, the other thing that we need to uh, understand is that. Um, um, in our in our use of uh, you know personal pronouns or uh, in a use of pronouns you know I and we and they and so on you know, um, well the sometimes we are tempted to to preach down you know just say um, you know you all the time you know God wants you 
to do this. God wants you to repent. Uh, you should change. Uh, you should do this and you should not do this and so on. You know, you know uh, and it's good to include ourselves you know, as speakers. And if you're a speaker, it's good to include yourself and say, this is what God would like us to do. It, 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 it's good to include yourself uh, in the uh, in the message. Right? Um, so uh, when we say, you know, I uh, just want to highlight this. We and I are usually appropriate in speaking as a fellow learner. Okay, so yes, there are times when you know there are we are fellow learners. We are walking um, uh, with journeying with the body of Christ. So it's good to include ourselves and say we and uh, uh, i i'm learning this i'm i'm you know i'm sharing this as a fellow learner um also we yes we need to use you and address the congregation you know god would want you to do this and uh, see when is the appropriate time because you're there as a god as a spokesperson for god as well Right. You are there as um, as a spokesperson, and uh, you are representing um, God, and uh, uh, and and being there uh, to share the message that God has put in your heart. So, uh, yes, there are times when we need to use you, but be careful that uh, that you don't uh, you know talk down or uh, preach down on people, right? Um, also, okay, there's something that I struck out, you know, when uh, which, uh, which I thought was not very relevant, you know, uh, like when you use yourself as an illustration, uh, talk about errors and sins rather than victories. And I think uh, uh, that's not a fully, um, I, I should have just edited it out, uh, uh, you know, a bit earlier before I put the notes. But the thing is that you can talk about both. Right. You can talk about victories that God has taken us through by His grace, and we can also talk about um, you know our failures and the areas of uh, areas which are still works in progress. Right. We can talk about both. Right. Um, be sensitive to the non-Christian and the new Christian um, believers, new believers and the non-Christian alike. So uh, be sensitive to. Know, who is there in the congregation, right? Um, and especially if it's a, it's going to be a church kind of a gathering, you it is a mix of everyone, right? It is a mix of people whom they have invited. Uh, it's a big mix of uh, the non-Christian. It's a mix of uh, you know maybe the non-Christian or the new believer. Uh, the per it depends on the church, right? The kind of church it is, and uh, sometimes the percentage is less, right? Or sometimes the percentage of uh, the new believer is more it depends on the, uh, the the audience or the kind of church but um, you be aware of that okay um, now these uh, points nine and ten are quite important because uh, you know if we uh, um, if you use this then we kind of lose out on the audience you know? be mindful of jargon be mindful of Christianese. You know, um, in the Christian circle, we we use certain terms, and it's become uh, it's become part and parcel of it. You know, we use words like you know glory and and uh, hallelujah, and we expect a response and amen and expect a response uh, and so on. Nothing wrong, but um, uh, and also you know we use certain other terms uh, like justification and sanctification. It's it's good to define these terms um, and uh, and uh, you know, and use it, or uh, or use the term, and then define it, uh, because it will. Then the audience is with us. The congregation is with us, right? Um, also, stay grace oriented, which means that you talk about, uh, you know, we, especially when it comes to uh, Old Testament examples of how how God deals with people, how God dealt with people. Um, it's good to give the complete picture by talking about the cross. Um, that gives a complete picture right, about grace and uh, what happened because of the cross and how God deals with us today because of the cross. So um, 
you know, while we talk about holiness and the need for um, uh, walking in personal purity and so on, you know, which is very, very important, talk about the, uh, the grace of God, which empowers us to walk in that uh, manner also. Okay? So uh, uh, while addressing that, avoid Christianese and avoid verbal fact. Now oh, that's that's also something, you know, in a in, in an attempt to be very articulate, in an attempt to be in, in an attempt to sound, um, uh, I don't know, in, in an attempt to in an attempt to you know kind of impress. Sometimes we we use words, we uh, and we lose out on the simplicity of what we want to share, right? and uh, so avoid verbal fat. Uh, you know, using many words instead of one, or using a very convoluted, long sentence um, instead of a simple one. So look at simple ways of communicating the truth, and uh, uh, audience will always be with you, always be with you, follow you through. Right? Um, okay. So some more thoughts here. Um, let's say if it's a if it's a forum where it's an interactive one and uh, there is going to be a question and answer session maybe it's a it's a camp it's a retreat and after the session that's going to be a, you know time of interaction discussion and maybe question and answers um, uh, what is required of us is to uh, be ready with questions additional questions you know if people don't really come up with questions maybe we can ask questions so you we can prepare and be ready with some questions um, and give answers and probably that will spark a discussion that might even you know stir up some questions uh, from the from the audience right um, also to be alert when questions are being asked so we don't lose track you know sometimes we are uh, what happens is I mean this has happened to me and I just I hear the question first part of it and then I'm already thinking of the answers so we lose the you know you know the completeness of the question right? so the fullness of the question and uh, and that's important because that gives the context uh, of why the person is asking that question and that gives us um, the understanding where we need to start in, in order to uh, answer the question right um, it's good to get feedback uh, if possible, maybe there's an experienced speaker, pastor, your mentor in the congregation, or who who has probably heard the message. Um, it's good to get feedback. Or maybe it's recorded and it's uh, you know posted online, and it's it's good to get feedback. Um, it's also good to for us to record ourselves and listen and see where we can change, uh, where we can, you know, uh, some of our presentations and all our presentations are online, right? So you can always listen and see, you know, how can I, uh, how can I improve? You know, um, how could I have communicated this better? Or how could I have made this, um, uh, you know, a little more interesting and so on, right? So you could always listen to yourself and, uh, and improve. Um, on that so um so it's it's always um, it's it's never wrong to get feedback um constructive feedback and uh, you know maybe there are some positive things maybe there are some things um uh, negative things that are shared and um, you know be open to that uh, it will always help us right okay um so when we minister the word as as uh, you know in a church and as a pastor Let's say you know you're part of the congregation, or you are leading a congregation. Sorry, you're 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 giving spiritual oversight to a congregation. So uh, the dynamics of um, of the presentation, uh, there are certain things that change when you're that you know, when you're with the congregation, journeying with the congregation, and uh, yeah, you know you are you are sharing, you're ministering the word. Okay. Um, here are some things that, that are helpful. Okay. Um, because of uh, the fact that we are part of that uh, or giving spiritual oversight to this body of believers and you are gathering there uh, frequently maybe sunday after sunday or in some places friday after friday right so we can actually plan and minister long term right you can plan 
for the entire year, and which is uh, which is something that we do here, uh, which Pastor does, and the you know, so we plan for the entire year, okay, January to December. Well, what are some things that we want to bring in? Okay, where is God leading us as a body, as a church? So, what are some things that we can look at? And what was uh, um, what will also help us is to um, you know what has helped me personally is the um, what you are learning in the local church, you know, the house of God, and the pictures that are there, which which we see um, the design that we see uh, for the local church, for the body of believers in the Word of God itself, uh, being the vine and the branch, being the pillar of truth. Uh, being a family, being the army, and so on. So, um, being the house of prayer. So, you know, these are things that we can help develop the church. So we can, you know, look at the body and body of Christ and see, okay, where are we, you know, in this area? Where are we, we in this um, in this particular thing? Maybe as a house of prayer, where are we, you know, in terms of praise and worship? Where are we? Um, and what is the journey that we need to make? What is the insight that we can uh, bring further and develop? The church, you know, what can we do in terms of uh, you know discipleship? What can we do in terms of uh, you know uh, reaching out? Um, and so there is a wholesome growth and maturity, and coming to maturity, and uh, we develop in all these areas, right? It could be in the area of um, uh, maybe family. It could be in the area of um, you know work. Uh, uh, you know skills regarding that it could be in the area of uh, you know some some deeper spiritual truth it could be in the way of um, you know how are we discipling others how are we reaching out to others simply put you know some categories so um so we could develop we could think of that and uh, we have the um, you know we have the privilege of doing that long term Right. So maybe we can even think of, you know, this year, this is where we want to go as a church. Um, next year, we can look at something else, you know, maybe round two of the same thing, which is just going a little further and deeper, um, which is what, you know, looking back, we've, we've seen that, which is what we have done, you know, maybe, uh, you know, when we, were, when we were studying the prophetic and the gifts of the spirit and so on, um, 10 years ago, when we addressed that, or even who we are in Christ, the series that we just finished um, ten years ago or fifteen years ago, when we when we looked at that, uh, it is very different from the depth to which we are doing right now. Right? It has been uh, it has been line upon line. It has been one level to another level of uh, of uh, you know spiritual depth and understanding. Right. So so we can minister with that in mind. So which means we don't have to unload everything onto the congregation. Uh, at one go, because you have, you know, the rest of the year and you have the years ahead, so you can plan and do that, right? Um, so, so this is what we are doing. We are taking people along in their spiritual journey, and we are building a body. So, so think of it as a journey. Think of it as, okay, uh, uh, we have different kinds of people in different levels of maturity, and and you sense that, okay, this is where the congregation is. You know, with regard uh, with regard to this particular topic, you know, we've, this is the first time we're talking about it, and this is where you feel the congregation is. So, um, let's take some time, let's spend some time, and uh, and and take them along. Right? Um, so it, it might be a little slow. The journey might be a little slow, and but it's okay. We're going to revisit again and you know build again on build further on the foundation. Right. Um, well, uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, there will be a need to address uh, challenges, problems, uh, areas of growth, weaknesses, things that need to change. Right? Um, because you know we are dealing with people, and uh, it just takes two people to not see eye to eye, right? Um, to have issues, to have challenges. So. More so when we have, um, you know, entire body of believers, and um, there there is bound to be, uh, uh, there will be challenges, interpersonal. There will be other challenges as well. So, um, so make up your mind to address these as well. Um, some of these, of course, will have to be addressed personally, 
and uh, not necessarily from the pulpit, not necessarily from, you know, as a message, but uh, but certain things can be addressed, um, you know, from, from the pulpit as well. Maybe it's a challenge that people are going through. And maybe it's a season where, you know, everybody's going through a particular, you know, facing a particular challenge. And then, you know, that can be addressed as well. Right. Um, so we will stay sensitive to the current dealings of God with the church. You know, how, how is God dealing? What is God doing in our midst? Um, you, know, you will be sensitive to that. Um, or be sensitive to that. Uh, yes, we have the opportunity to repeat and uh, and repeat and over and over again what uh, has been taught, but with a greater degree, uh, with some newer uh, revelations or maybe some th truths that need to be uh, reiterated and have to be made strong. You, know? you see that, uh, well, uh, things have not really you know, taken root. And, uh, and some of the challenges, problems faced are because of that, and right, where people are not really taking a hold of that particular truth or something that was shared. Um, and therefore, we have the opportunity to repeat that so that things are made firm and established. Right? Uh, share the whole counsel of God, of course, not just one aspect, you know, so that people are presented as mature in in all things. Like Paul says, you know, make it. He says, make it our aim to present uh, people mature uh, in all things, and so we can do that and uh, and be practical, right? We're dealing with uh, real people, real issues, uh, real challenges. So, well, the practical application of uh, what we are teaching, uh, it's it's good to stay practical, you know, that there is uh, an application side to the truth and uh, share that, okay. Um, but when we are sh sharing as a visiting uh, or itinerant minister, well, 30 minutes or 40 minutes is all we have, okay? Uh, if we don't get invited again, that is. Right? So, um, so when we are sharing as a visiting, as an itinerant uh, preacher, minister, um, so yes, if, if you know in advance that you are coming back later, well, you can plan a little differently, but uh, pray about it and plan a little differently. But if it is just a one-time thing, then it's it's going to be a word in season, right? So seeking the Lord and saying, Lord, what is it that um, that I can share today to address this body of believers and uh, share that word, share that word in season uh, that is applicable to the body, right? Um, well. Always respect the local leadership. Now, that's another thing. We are well. We are invited there. We are guest speakers. Um, respect the local leadership. That's the person who has, uh, you know, who's done the hard work of uh, sowing and watering, and and the Lord has given us the privilege to go and and water. You know, the feet, figuratively speaking. So respect that, respect those who have come there before you, respect the work that is done. And maybe things are not as it should be, you know. Maybe you feel that, oh, hey, uh, where I come from, you know, uh, people are more responsive. Where I come from, people are uh, more mature. Here I, well, that may be so, you know, people could be very different. But uh, you see that as an opportunity, you see that as a need. Um, and also, you know, respect and honor the work that is done. And I remember um, like Pastor Ajay sharing that uh, whenever we travel and, and you know visit other uh, other churches or other other towns and have meetings, you know, the thing is to keep bear in mind that we leave the place better and not worse off. You know by your ministering, by your life, for example, and everything, leave the place better than how it was and not worse off, right? So um, so this will help, right? Uh, respecting the local leadership, the local pastors. Maybe they, you don't see eye to eye on a lot of things, um, well, but uh, just respect and honor, honor them, right? 
also don't step outside of your bounds while ministering you know so what are some areas where we could step outside of our boundaries or outside of you know our, uh, uh, our boundaries really uh, uh, some of the things could be you know uh, one of the common thing is uh, time you know, the, the person says okay you you have so much time to do it uh, to share uh, and some and sometimes you know some some places it's like very very limited right some places they uh, you go they say you know, just you decide you take your time you know you tell me when you're done and it's, it's so flexible right? but some places places they this is how they do it you know it's like maybe 15 minutes maybe 20 minutes um, but honor that right? respect that and uh, and do that right so well if if you feel a revival coming and the spirit of god stirring up things and uh, always uh, defer back to the leadership and say okay you know do you think we can go another 10 minutes you know not from the mic right you're putting that person in a spot but uh, but really you know maybe personally you know, check or maybe you send a note or something check and see you know, can we do this or is it okay to do this is it okay to you know minister in prayer just you can you know check with them and and then do it right um so maybe uh, there's a congregation and then they don't um, they don't necessarily you know talk openly about baptism of the holy spirit or anything you know so there's no need to go there you know get the uh, permission of the local leadership and then do it right so so here are the so these are some things for us to keep in mind uh, as we minister um you know there there's some material here as an appendix you can just go through that uh, as an add on uh, you can read through it um th th these are things that we have seen uh, already we can, we have already uh, looked through it but um, you know some some of these things will be an overlap so i'm just not going through it um I just want to look at um, these six laws of dynamic Bible teaching. Okay, I'm just skipping over to that. It's page 55. Yeah, I think somebody raised a hand. Yeah, yes, Rikma. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I have a question, uh, which uh, uh, which I personally um, experienced when you are sharing about this. Um, uh, you know. When somebody invites you and um, preaching the things, mm. I just want to know that. Um, and um, I took a decision. Now it's a very old thing, but then also I want to be careful whether I did mm. it right or wrong because of uh, uh, the lack of guidance and all. So maybe I have done it in my ignorance, or um, you know. So I just want to know that whether I did it right or not. I got an um, I got uh, I I got an invitation from a pastor. Uh, actually, he's from abroad and uh, he wanted to do some mission work and he wanted to come here and uh, um, do some ministry in North India. But um, uh, his teachings are not, um, you know, he, wa he was needed a translator. So who can able to translate in Hindi because he was um, he was um, he was actually from uh, from from South, but he's uh, he was settled in Dubai. So. Let's say he wanted to do some ministry in North India because he was not so fluent in Hindi. Right. So, but his teachings were not, um, you know, aligned with uh, what 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 we are having. And uh, he's uh, yes, absolutely, he's have he had a church, and um, uh, they they are like uh, you know <laughs> what to say, as you said that they speak against the um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, they speak against the prophets of the God. They speak against like. I don't uh, like um, you know for them every everyone is like uh, you know they see them in a very different way and um, that was their even they I attended their church because I was in Dubai for some some months uh, so I found that um, uh, like um, their teachings are very different like you no know, they they take the scripture and they preach it in a very different way which <laughs> which really uh, you know which is not at all uh, connected with the, the the revelation of Christ and all. So in that case, when he was, he asked me uh, that, uh, can you uh, help me to, um, uh, you know, um, assist, assist him uh, to travel uh, with him in North India and all other part of, uh, yes, absolutely. It's an opportunity for me to, uh, to share the gospel. 
Mm-hmm. But then I thought, okay, um, but I felt that um, no, I should not go with him because um, is even though it is a uh, like he's sharing the word of God, I have to assist him. Maybe he will also give me an opportunity to share something. But I also have to be. I cannot speak something what God is putting in my heart, <laughs> and uh, it will be something. It it will it can be a mess. Yeah. So uh, directly, indirectly, I said, uh, "Sorry, Pastor, I'm <laughs> I'm very busy. I cannot uh, I cannot uh, you know uh, as, assist you or help you." Um, is that uh, decisions what I took? Is it the right thing? Because uh, that time I have no one to help me and assist me. Mm. So just in case, if in case in future, if some opportunities come, uh, yeah. what I have to do? Thank you, Pastor. That is my question. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, the, the fact that you declined that offer uh, to minister, I think it's 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 good because having uh, known upfront that this is this is going to be the content. And it's uh, you're not going to be there with one heart and one mind. You're not going to be united, and you're going to be the, you know, you're going to be the mouthpiece really. And the people are going to listen to you, and 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 um, and you won't be able to do it wholeheartedly. You know, they, you'll be there with a divided heart in the sense. Uh, okay, I'm here. I've taken it up, and I'm just even though you're conveying what he's conveying, but and that could be slightly off uh, the truth. Maybe it's a cessationist thing or whatever. You know? So yeah, I think uh, you did the right thing. Um, yeah, Shri Kumar. Um, like I've, I've had firsthand experiences where like we went and shared uh, in, a, in a church and because um, we didn't know that um, this particular translator was having difficulties with the, uh, you know, usually the things of the spirit, you know, that's where uh, normally these differences are. And then, uh, so is kind of, uh, we sense that he was actually sharing it a little differently. And the person who was actually speaking, uh, sharing the word, he knew that he knew a little bit of, uh, you know, the, the other language. So kind of realized that it was, it was not going um, as per plan. And so, uh, yeah, so it was. It didn't go well, you know. So it's uh, it's great if the you know if you know that the translator can also flow in the same manner, and uh, yeah, and and it can be a great blessing. Like I remember once we went to this place, and um, this translator, uh, we went to. I think this was in uh, okay. We went to Chandigarh, and this translator could actually. Um, not only translate into the thing, but he could also sing. So he, he we had a night of worship, um, uh, worship and prayer. So he could he could sing, and not only could he sing, but uh, you know whatever we were singing, some of the prophetic worship or spontaneous things that were coming out and we were declaring, uh, he would catch that and he would sing that as well, right? So so that was a you know we could really flow together. And we went there with a lot of fear, you know, saying, hey, we don't know Hindi. Um, and uh, these are the songs that we know in Hindi. So how are we going to, you know, manage that? But then uh, here was this translator and uh, he just absolutely bridged the gap and got put to rest all the fear. So uh, first time we could see the effect of a good translator who was flowing with the oneness of heart, with the oneness of you know, the same spirit. So I think uh, you know that's that is key, you know? uh, not only in translation but in ministry. You know, uh, otherwise there's going to be uh, uh, you know you're not seeing there's there's not unity, right? You're not in one accord, and God values that, and you're in unity and the anointing flows. You know, you know the psalm. Wonderful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And it's like the oil flowing from you know from the hair to the beard. A typical picture of the Holy Spirit, the anointing. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Right. Okay. Most welcome. Um, okay. So I think, um, yeah. Um, yeah, this is going to take some time. So we'll uh, we'll skip that. We'll keep it for the next session. Um, so we'll stop here. And uh, next class, um, we have... Um, we have these five people. Just put that list here. Maybe you can share it on the group. You know, these are folks who are yet to share. Um, 
and you can just remind them. Hope William, Harrison, Salome, uh, Oliver Femi, Nisha, Evangeline. Um, I saw Nisha Peter. Nisha, uh, same as Nisha Evangeline. Yeah, yeah, Kennedy, you want to share something? I think Hope has an issue. Mm -hmm. He's moved to the other class. Eh? I I'm sorry. So, Hope. Hope has an okay. issue. Eh? Okay. So I think he's gone to the the E class. So I think he's not available because he even requested to be he's spoken to Alpha Sashish where they could redo his courses. Oh, okay, okay. He's on the E platform. I see. He's on the E platform, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll interact with him there. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for. Um, yeah. So, um, is Nisha Nisha Peter? Are you different from Nisha Evangeline? Or is it the same Nisha? Nisha Peter. Um, okay. You can let me know. And also, blessing. I think you. Um, you wanted to share, um, but I don't see your sermon topic yet. So you can put that up. If you've decided, please put it up. I put it on the group already, sir. On the uh, link. On, on the link. Okay, I'm just going there. Um, I don't see your name listed. Uh, the last one is uh, Harrison, number 31. Okay, can you just quickly tell me what is it that you wanted to speak on? I wanted to speak on God's mercy. God's mercy? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So I'm just going to enter it here. God's mercy. Okay. Um, okay, because that, uh, that, that was not there. Okay, fine. So I... I'll include your name as well. So instead of hope, you can share. So, uh, Blessing, can you can you share the next class, which is Wednesday? On Wednesday. On Wednesday. Okay, Pastor. Yeah. Okay. So we can have Harrison, Salome, and yourself. Um, yeah, share that next class. So I, I just want to request everyone to come prepared. You know these these names here. So if even if one person can't share, the other person can. Okay, so thank you. God bless. Have a great weekend. Um, we'll catch up soon. Bye bye. Bye, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Bye bye. God bless. Bye bye, sir.